Hello, everyone. Welcome to The Political Vigilante. I'm here in a beautiful hotel room in gorgeous Lake Havasu, Arizona. I'm on the Progressive Comedy Tour with Ron Flacone. Um, and I have more dates coming up in June with Ron. Please check my website in the show notes below. But I am here from Disobedient Media with Elizabeth Voss. Elizabeth, how are you doing? I'm great. I'm fantastic. Glad to be here again. Always awesome to speak with you. Yeah, it's it's... Uh, it's been cool following what you've been covering at Disobedient Media. You guys, I cannot uh, say enough how impressed your site is and how in-depth um, your articles are and your research. And it's like, oh, this this is what journalism, I think, <laughs> used to be like. It's like back in the olden times when there was ethics and uh, no corporate meddling. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, no, that's an extremely huge compliment. That's probably the highest praise we can get at Disobedient Media. And we do try to present the issues that the media is either not covering or covering incorrectly. And another way to put that is that we pull the strings that others won't. So... Uh, one of the stories that we've covered recently that I think to date very few, I mean, I, I think about zero press outlets picked up on this story that I am aware of, but it's centering on Mifsud, Joseph Mifsud, who is the absolute beating heart of the Trump-Russia collusion allegations, because he supposedly told George Papadopoulos, who was previously Trump's national security advisor, uh, that he, that Mifsud had uh, dirt on Hillary Clinton in the form of thousands of emails. And this trickled on to become the allegations of these this collusion between Trump and Russia, which also falsely implies that uh, Russia is the source for WikiLeaks publication of the DNC and Podesta emails, which is a separate story. But basically, very recently at Distribute Media, we were privileged to speak with a UK political analyst uh, named Chris Blackburn, whose tweet was the inspiration for an article that we wrote on uh, Joseph Mifsud and the fact that all of these trails of the Trump-Russia collusion narrative seem to go back to London and the UK. And so when uh, after we published that first piece, uh, Chris contacted us and so we discussed his research a little bit and we said, well, why don't we just interview you because you've done such in-depth reporting and, and research on this issue. And so we were able to interview him and he explained in great, great detail the various ways in which Mifsud cannot be a UK intelligence asset because he is deeply involved with a, a, U, uh, with UK and Western European intelligence uh both agents and locations and campuses where uh, FBI and CIA train, as well as other uh, aspects of the UK and Western intelligence agencies. And so the way that this has been misportrayed in the media is that uh, basically they say that uh, Mifsud is this eclectic Maltese academic who is working for Russia and works at these shady campuses and all of that. And they use that that false narrative to support the Russian collusion thing. And so but the reality is, as Chris showed us very factually, I mean, we cited ex, um, extensively all of the uh, fact and the, the dot points that he was able to show us that not only is Mifsud not a Russian asset, but he was in contact with people who were MI6 agents or previously had been very, very high up in the UK intelligence community and that he is an academic, which is very, very commonly uh, a cover for intelligence agencies, but he really was on uh, at campuses that were focused on international relations mm -hmm. and, and et cetera. But really significantly, the, the campuses and the universities where he was employed were, as I said, they were, they were hosting CIA training conferences. They were hosting Italian military. They were hosting all of these things. So the idea that he could accidentally be a Russian agent and work with these high level individuals is absolutely ridiculous. The other thing about this that's really interesting is that one of Mifsud's best friends, uh, Gianni Patella, is a uh, a huge Clinton fan, and he actually campaigned for Hillary, Hillary Clinton. And you can look up a Time Magazine article covering the fact that he opened one of her campaign events in, in Philadelphia. So it's really, really interesting. And what Chris had to say to us was basically that UK journalists, many journalists are aware 
of this situation. They are aware of the connection between Patella and Mifsud. It, and I mean, he explained to us as well the fact that American and UK intelligence agencies also would have known about this very, very quickly if, when they were researching Mifsud. But uh, they, he told us that the journalists and the intelligence agencies most likely have not wanted to uh, expose these facts because they do contradict the Trump Russian narrative. And because Mifsud is so central to that narrative, um, you know, discrediting the allegation that he's a Russian asset completely trashes the entire basis for the Russia uh, Trump Russia collusion narrative and that's important to me not because I support Trump but because it is a narrative which could potentially see tensions rise even more between uh, the US and Russia which is very dangerous and I care about the truth and I think that these false narratives need to be called out when there is evidence to debunk them yeah so. <laughs> and I think well yeah I mean that's that's uh, like can I applaud you for that uh, the level of research you're putting into that and, and it, it brings up such a valid point, <clears throat> which is um, you know people on the left are like, we just gotta hunt we just gotta string Trump puppies off or we got to get him out of there. I'm like, well first of all there's 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 Pence. So I don't yeah. think people realize like if we get if we get Trump out of there, then you think Pence Pence is actually more dangerous in the sense that he's not, outwardly offensive his twitter feed will be nice and polite he's clean cut he's not you know he's afraid to have lunch with a woman because he can't control himself or whatever and he's you know probably busy shocking the gay out of people but um he he's he's i mean he's dangerous and what will happen is all of this fake mick resistance they'll fall asleep with pence in the white house exactly very true so there's that and then like you say Saying the Russia thing is bullshit does not, I'm so tired of this, does not make me a Trump supporter. Exactly. I'm yes. tired of that. So I'm true. Cri critical of, if I say Hillary Clinton wasn't fit to be president because women are too hysterical, that's a sexist, ridiculous remark. If I say I didn't want Hillary to be Clinton, Hillary Clinton to be president because she voted for the war in Iraq, she voted yep. for the Patriot Act, <laughs> she, you exactly. know, there was 20 countries that donated to the Clinton Foundation, got defense contracts while she was Secretary of State. Those things I have a problem with. And I don't, it doesn't matter what her yeah. gender is, you know? Yeah. And it, it's so interesting to see to um, the, the establishment Democrats uh, attacking Jill Stein. And but but if we if we even criticize Hillary Clinton, then we're sexist, even even the women. And in fact, apparently uh, women that don't like Hillary Clinton either don't exist or we're listening to their husbands on who to vote for. Oh, yeah. You're, you're yeah, too dumb I mean, to make your own yeah. decisions. So you're, you're exactly. some man told you to vote for Trump or not Jill Stein. Exactly. But yeah, I, I know. I love that narrative. But then here's a woman who's a doctor. And yet. You notice, and this is the classiness of, of Jill Stein and Bernie Sanders, yeah. neither one of them have ever played the anti-Semitic card. Yeah, true. Very no one true. in their camp, they all could be going, oh, you, oh, you, if you're saying this about Jill Stein, you must hate Jews. They could say that, but they have this crazy thing called ethics and they just like the truth and they don't yeah. have to play identity politics. And the other time you see that is when she, like, w she was willing to sit uh, ch shackled outside um, a debate she was not allowed into for hours and hours. I mean, the strength that that woman has is incredible. So yeah, the attacks on her and the the allegations um, against her about this Russian this Russia Gate hysteria is absolutely despicable. It's horrible. It's and the thing is, I I love this like the little old Green Party is this big threat. I mean, exactly. uh, like okay, let's not blame Monsanto. Let's blame a farmers market. It's like literally, it's like the Green Party. <laughs> I mean, how much pull do they have versus the one point five billion dollars that Hillary raised for the twenty sixteen campaign? I mean, absolutely. I, 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 and the other thing too, when people are like Graham, why don't you, you know, why are you saying that this Russia thing is is bullshit? I'm like. Well, first of all, if there was Russian collusion, fine. Great. Yeah, we should investigate that. But we can't walk and chew gum at the same time, you know? And why are we, yeah. you'll notice we're spending all this time on the Russia, 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 right? I've been hearing this now for 18 goddamn months. Yeah, and it's old. It's old. We just Very. spent $120 million sending rockets to Syria based on an alleged, an alleged, this is a quote from the New York Times, an alleged chemical weapons attack. $120 million. You know what that could have done? Fixed Flint, Michigan's twice. water. Twice. 
Yes, I fixed it. Exactly. Like exactly. I mean, economy we, of death is what I call that. You know, yep. that's that's all we are right now, and I think it's disgusting and despicable. Absolutely. And then anything I, yeah. that that any time wasted. Not, you know, they won't, re they refuse, you know, and Rachel Maddow and everyone at all the major networks, they're, they they got to talk Russia, 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 because Boeing buys ad, ad time on their networks. Exactly. They make an incredible amount of money every day for shilling for the, um, you know, military industrial complex. That's what they do. And um, when you talked about the alleged um, chemical attack in Syria, that also the, the flimsiness of that evidence is similar in my head to the uh, flimsiness of these Trump, these Trump Russia collusion allegations, and uh, returning to Mifsud just for one moment, um, it's so flimsy that Robert Mueller refused to actually indict Mifsud, probably because all of the connections I just mentioned would be exposed. So he is absolutely described by all of the establishment media as this principal figure in the Trump Russia collusion narrative, but. They never talk about the fact that Mueller hasn't even indicted the guy. So if they had something to prove that that was the case, why isn't he under arrest? Why isn't he being questioned by Mueller's entire committee? And see, he's conveniently disappeared. And so that's mm. the end of that story. But I wanted to just add that because I feel like it. you see this over and over again, whether it's Syria, whether it's Trump Russia, whatever the issue is that the deep state is sort of pushing, we always see these bombastic allegations with no evidence to back them yeah. whatsoever. It's it's kind. Of, it, I don't even think that it's so much that they think that Americans are stupid. I think that the situation is is, is that they have been emboldened by their long term success, oh. and I don't think that they even care to make sense anymore. They just are dropping the veil, sort of. They have gotten away with this for decades. Exactly. Why would they think that they it's going to stop? I mean, and what they do is the equivalent of if let's say you and I were out to dinner in a fairly crowded restaurant and. No one in the restaurant knew either one of us personally, right? Yeah. And then you stood up and went, oh, Graham, you, you're a child <laughs> molester and screamed at me and ran out. How, everyone in the restaurant would be going, huh? And they'd look at me like, hmm. Some people yeah. might go, oh, maybe that girl's nuts. But some people might go, I don't know about this guy. Yeah, exactly. No evidence, no nothing. You just yelled and screamed. And then I look guilty. Exactly. It's that's what they do. And they've yeah. been doing this. Fuck, they did it with weapons of mass destruction in 2000. I mean, Bush did this. I mean, they've been doing this for decades. Absolutely. I think the fact that the um, independent media have risen, it has been a good a good consequence of the fact that people are so sick and tired of, of these narratives and they are turning away from establishment media in droves. Mm -hmm. And so um, just the existence of the Internet um, has changed the, the landscape of media and these propaganda narratives in a way that did not exist in 2003. So in 2003, right. when we were leading up to the Iraq war, I didn't hear of VIPs and vet veteran intelligence professionals for sanity who were calling out the weapons of mass destruction narrative as BS. I didn't hear them because yeah. independent media didn't exist yet. And obviously you weren't going to hear that on CNN or Fox News or any of the others. So I think that that is the one positive is that, yes, it's all bullshit, but we are now speaking up and people are hearing us when we do that. And I think that that's a good thing. Um, I hope that that continues and that we don't get censored uh, at, just out of existence, but it is what it is, so. Yeah, I think then we're, we're gonna see it here in the midterms. I think my guess is a handful of progressives might win in the, in the primaries, not a lot, but then the races where the corporate Republicans and Democrats win, I'm kind of, maybe this is me being naive or over, overly optimistic. I'm hoping then a bunch of people say, well, fuck it, then I'm going to run as an independent or a green in the general. And yeah. then we're going to even, then they're going to win some of those. Like, I think, I hope so. You know, yeah. because you've got people running as openly socialist. You know, you've got people, um, saying everyone everyone can kind of sense that this is all bullshit. Yes. And they're just uh, some people have found the me independent media like this. They found this show, your show, Jimmy Dore, they found these shows yes. and gone, "Oh, whoa, wait a minute." You know? Yeah. And 
I think more people are waking up. So that's what I'm kind of hoping for in this year. And then there's two years from now for the presidential that like everyone goes, nah. And some dra- I think we're going to see some drastically different things. I think you're going to see some big name people bail on the Democratic Party, maybe some big name people bail on the Republican Party. And there's going to be some viable third or just independent candidates running that are blowing everybody away. Yeah, I think and I think the big name uh, voices turning away from the Democratic Party is exactly what they are terrified of. And that's why they attack people like Susan Sarandon so viciously is because they are trying to make an example out of her. And it's disgusting. Um, Absolutely horrendous. Cool. Well, thank you so much for being on the show. Um, everybody out there, if you haven't already, please go to Disobedient Media. They're doing fantastic work. They're showing what journalism actually should be, what it used to be, <laughs> and what it, uh, how it should continue. And uh, they're another independent media voice that you should absolutely support. Make sure you are liking and subscribing to these videos. Google has been unsubscribing people. And my Patreon link is below. It's another great way to support independent media. And uh, I've got uh, more tour dates with Ron Placone in June through Nashville, Alabama, North Carolina, Georgia, Kentucky. Um, So check all of those out. Thank you so much for watching the show. And thank you again, Elizabeth, for being on it. Thank you. Pleasure to be here.